So look, I think I think it's a bit of therapy for Mr. Zangane for Iran coming here and getting angry at the start of a meeting and then calming down throughout the week as well. I, I can tell you that I've been to one or two of these meetings, as, as maybe the viewers know, uh, and I've seen several of the more bellicose, uh, more hawkish members over the years from Ramirez from Venezuela, from Zangane himself of Iran, and others coming in very hawkish, very aggressive, and, and, and as the meeting has progressed, working out some form of compromise. As the bilaterals carry on, and, and Mr. Al Falah came into town yesterday and started those bilaterals straight away, trying to soothe those nerves of the Iranians. So yes, I think he's got what he wanted to say out in the in the in, in the domain about Mr. Trump uh, and about the, the barrelage on the market as well. And he said it, and maybe he's going to actually now find some form of compromise because he doesn't actually hold too many cards. That's the problem, you see, as well. The Iranians can't increase output. They've got sanctions problems as well. Uh, and the sanctions issue is very important. We can come back to the broader oil story afterwards because there are so many important points to make. But I had a, a really enjoyable interview yesterday evening, exclusive for major broadcasters, by the way, uh, with Patrick Pouyane, who is the CEO of Total. Uh, and he was on very very good form and he made some terrific comments about price which we've already played uh, on Capital Connection but he also made some great comments about there's nothing he can do about it if the geopolitics mean he can't invest in Iran and he would have been the biggest FDI investor in Iran since sanctions were lifted now of course he's saying look what can I do why don't you listen in and then we'll chat afterwards you cannot keep the politics out of oil and gas it's not true I mean this is their job but you know it's not only a supply and demand exercise and market by the way you know OPEC does not Decide the price, it's not true. OPEC is just an organization which can control level of production of one part of the market and not all the markets. It represents 30% of the market. With the 24 countries, it's 50%. But it doesn't decide the price, it's not true. So they try to make figures and supply, demand, all that is just what seems to be mathematical. At the end, the market takes other elements. You know, the market anticipates on what is. Uh, the situation of the world economy. Will the world economy be low, lower because of trade wars? This is another important. What is the impact of relationships with Russia, sanctions? You know, if one country puts sanctions everywhere in the world, you will have an impact. So that's other element. So I think they try to say it's not political. Of course, everybody knows that you have some politics deeply involved. The Middle East, uh, consuming countries, you know, the, the largest free oil producers are the US, Russia and Saudi Arabia. Don't you think you have politics there? Yeah, yeah, of course. Look, you, you've got is yourself involved in some ways in the biggest FDI into Iran. Now you've had to pull away. I don't think you've spent anywhere near the kind of money that you were going to spend. I think it's around about $40 million so far as well. You seem very pragmatic about it. You want to get into South Pars, but because of the sanctions, you just don't feel you can t stay there or, or, or develop those assets. Yes, I have to be pragmatic. I have no choice, you know, and we, but we have been always very clear on that with our um, uh, Iranian partners, with everybody. We went into Iran because the GCPOA lifted the secondary sanctions from the U.S. And any, there is not a single international company like Total who can work in any country with secondary sanctions. I cannot, I don't have the right to do that. It's, it's just the reality of the world. I know that my speech does not please some... Uh, European leaders, etc. But you know, at the end of the day, you have to face the reality. The reality is that the, world, the capital of the world today is in the hand of the US. That's the reality. So, is it right that in this world, the US are using that to become, to impose some laws to other countries? That's a debate. It's not a debate of the CEO of Total. I'm chairman and CEO of a company. But you're stuck in I'm the not middle, a, aren't I'm you? not the head of state, so you know, I'm just. So, I have to be pragmatic. And I will, do, I will tell you the truth if that it would happen again, I would do it again. I, it's up to us. To take the chance, there is a market. If its market is closed, we have to give up. I cannot afford to expose Total to be secondary sanctions. It's not possible. The US is too important for financing, for development of your international yeah, assets as well. Yeah, exactly. The, in fact, fundamentally, you know, the one of parties that the US could decide, but I could not have access to any US financing. It's impossible, let's be clear, to run in a, a, an international company like Total without having access to US financing or to US shareholding. So um, uh, that's the reality of the world. We have to take that into account. That was Patrick Pouyonne, uh, the CEO and chairman of uh, Total, of course, exclusively for a major broadcaster talking to CNBC uh, yesterday evening. I thought he was fantastic in terms of what he said. Look, he said, I went in, I would do it again, but what can I do? I cannot fight the financing that comes in dollars. I cannot fight the fact that US sanctions mean on a, as a secondary sanction. I can't do anything about this. And I thought that was very practical as well. He also made the comment, and I'll just say this before I hand back to you in the studio, that he doesn't know where price is going. It could be 50, it could be $100. He said on fundamentals, it's not worth 
a hundred dollars. But it, given the oscillation and, and geopolitics and the volatility we're seeing in how such a small amount of oil, one percent imbalance, could create a 20, 30 percent swing, I thought they were fascinating comments. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.